Hey booktube, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Shelly, if you are new here, and if not, then hi, <laughs> hi guys. Um, so what are we, what are we doing today? So today I, okay, let me give you some context. The long short of it is I'm going to be showing you a bunch of short books that are on my mind. Okay, that's the long short of it. <laughs> and how I got, I'm gonna tell you why these short books are on my mind, and then I'm gonna go through my short book collection, and then I want you all, or maybe while I'm doing that, I would like you all to recommend your favorite short books um, to me down in the comments. Um, books maybe less than 200 pages, but if they're even shorter than that, that would be wonderful. There are two things going on separately, but seem to be talking to one, or one another and seem to be working their ways into my brain. So the first thing is Britta Bowler and Heidi from My Reading Life are doing the 30 books in 30 days challenge. Uh, this is something that Britta, I believe, came up with um, in order to read through a bunch of her short books um, to keep her library balanced as far as read and unread and um, in order to also, I think, uh, comply with her rule of she can only bring in as many books as she is reading. So, <laughs> so Britta does this 30 book in 30 days thing and I will leave uh, that video of hers linked down below where she talks about her rules and the idea for it all and her strategies um, and so I'm watching this content from Britta and then meanwhile Heidi is also doing this 30 books in 30 days challenge and I'm watching Heidi's channel and I'm like oh gracious now I have the inspiration to read a lot of books in a short amount of time um, I don't know if I would do 30 books in 30 days, but you know, I'm watching other people do it and it's starting to get me excited. Then something else happened. Uh, what happened is that past story time, uh, Bert and Sean, they uh, host an event called Shorty September. And it again is encouraging us uh, here on BookTube to bust out those short books and read them. And so they have this incredible prompt sheet uh, that <laughs> it's just so cute. I'm gonna show it to you now. So I hear about Shorty September. I see the prompt sheet and I am inspired to gather up every single short book in my library so that I can either prepare for Shorty September maybe prepare for 30 books in 30 days or maybe 20 books in 30 days or something like that. I feel inspired by the 30 books in 30 days. I feel inspired by Shorty September to look at my short books, to think about my short books, to consider what books I could read in a day or two or three. Um, yeah, and so that's what I did. And I wanted to share with you what I have as in terms of short books and the books that I'm thinking about in terms of reading in September. Okay, here we go. So the first prompt that I'm going to show you is Ripped Shorts, a slasher slash murder mix mystery. So here are all the books that fit into that category. I have this teeny tiny little book <laughs> that's written by Robert Coover and illustrated by Art Spiegelman. Art Spiegelman wrote and illustrated one of my favorite comic duologies, Mouse. So here are my copies of Mouse. I love this book. I love Art Spiegelman's um, art and perspective on the world and what he's done for the graphic novel uh, genre or this medium, this format. And yeah, I'm excited to read possibly <laughs> this little, I'm really, I really just need to get to reading this teeny tiny little book for reals. Okay, I have some Agatha Christie's. The mystery section would not be the same or complete without an Agatha Christie. So I have Double Sin and Other Stories and The Regatta Mystery and Other Stories, both by Agatha Christie. And then I have a mystery written by someone here on BookTube, uh, AJ Dunn of AJ Dunn Reads and Writes, gifted me one of their books and this is October Jones and the Lightning Pines, a mystery. This is a middle grade mystery and would definitely fit in with the ripped shorts category. Next we have shorty shorts, books from the 70s and 80s. And my first one is uh, the 1989 middle grade, 
what I consider almost a modern classic, but Number of the Stars by Lois Lowry, and then the 1987 historical fiction work by Jeanette Winterson called The Passion. Both of these are very short and clearly fit the prompt of 70s and 80s. We have Squirt Mixed Genres or Can't Fit in the Genre Box. I felt like I was che cheating just a tiny bit. And what I have is Hotel World by Ali Smith, which is a Booker finalist. It's a, again, fits in the shorty September <laughs> category. Um, but what I've heard is that Ali Smith's writing is very poetic and I know that she has a lot of fun with language. And so <laughs> to me, I was like, does that count as mixed genre? To me, it will. And then another prompt that I had kind of a hard time with was Emperor's New Shorts. And the prompt to go with that is Unreliable Narrator. Now, unless you have read the book before or the book is known to have an unreliable narrator, I think it's hard to know beforehand if the narrator is unreliable or not. But I do know that this narrator is um, very subversive. <laughs> and I know this because I started the book and I loved it and then I didn't have time to continue on. So I cannot wait to read this. And that is Written on the Body by Jeanette Winterson. All right, Denim Shorts, a modern classic. <laughs> so I had quite a bit of fun with this. The first one I have is um, The Vagina Monologues. I own this and haven't read it. And I don't know why. Feminist classic. And I really can't even tell you what it's about. Ariel or Ariel? <laughs> is it Ariel or is it Ariel? By Sylvia Plath, a small collection of poetry. A graphic novel, modern classic, Persepolis, the, the story of childhood by Mar Jane Strappy. This uh, tells, this is the memoir, the memoir of Mar Jane, and it talks about her uh, growing up in Iran. And finally, for modern classic, it is Michael Cunningham's The Hours, which uh, won the Pulitzer Prize for its year. It even says one of the Pulitzer Prize, um, and this talks a lot about or discusses or uses the themes of Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, which was one of my favorite reads from last year. And I've been meaning to get to this ever since I read Mrs. Dalloway and I keep on putting it off. So September, let's hope. We'll think, I'm thinking about you at least. All right, cargo shorts to, to, to do with nature. The first one, uh, I just think of this author as writing beautiful nature scenes, and that is John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men. And here is what sold me on putting this in the nature category. So here are the first few lines. A few miles south of Soldad, the Salinas River drops in close to the hillside bank and runs deep and green. The water is warm too, for it has slipped twinkling over the yellow sands in the sunlight before reaching the narrow pool. And then I was like, and he continues to describe scenery, so this definitely has to do with nature. And then actually, Penguin, did y'all know that Penguin had a nature, a um, nature line? There's Penguin Nature Classics. And so this definitely has to do with nature, and I've heard that this is amazing and heart-wrenching and beautiful, and that is, Ring of Bright Water by Gavin Maxwell, which is, um, I believe, his story about the time that when he befriends an otter. So yeah, and again, everything to do, to do with nature. This whole line actually. Boxer shorts, a comfort read. So I was thinking comfort reads for me are rereads. Those are just, they, they make me want to cozy up and just really enjoy and languish and um, kind of immerse myself again in a world that I already enjoyed. And so I have a couple of rereads um, that I could that I could get to and that would be Stag's Leap by Sharon Olds. I just read this and I could and probably will read it again very soon. Gold by Rumi, which is translated by Helena Lisa Gafori. Charlotte's Web by E.B. White and A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. Our next category is Bermuda Shorts, which is translated. So anything translated. This is one of my bigger piles. And for those of you who know me and my channel pretty well, you will have seen these around. I was moving forward and then realized that I wasn't telling you who these works were translated by, and that is a no-go, so I'm sorry. So Oedipus the King by Sophocles, and this is translated by Bernard Knox. 
Faust by Goethe, and this is translated by somebody. This is translated by David Constance Constantine. We have The Little Virtues, which is a book of essays by Natalie Ginsburg, Ginsburg and it is translated by Bell Bog. Bell Boggs. Two books by Marguerite Duras. Uh, we have The War, a memoir, which I haven't read, but it is written or it is translated by Barbara Braze and which i should have put this in the reread category i have the lover also by marguerite duras and also translated by barbara braze our next category is half and half shorts <laughs> uh read the book then watch the movie so i picked books that have um that are book to movie that have an adaptation into a movie um, and that is, the first one is The Play, A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine, Lorraine Hansberg. We have Brokeback Mountain by Annie Prulo. Prulo? Prulo? Oh gracious. Names, y'all. Okay, Passing, uh, which definitely has a movie to it because this is the Netflix cover of Passing by Nella Larson. All right, Runway Fashion Shorts. Um, books with beautiful covers. So I have the play St. Joan by Bernard Shaw. I like this cover because it is symbolic or it looks like it is symbolic. It also looks quite nonsensical and it looks hand drawn. And I have an affinity for hand drawn things, especially if there's like the outlines of these wings could have been perfected um, and cleaned up like in Photoshop. It's very easy to do. And they decided to keep it. And so I really like that um, organic, uh, that that or organicness of a line that is drawn by hand that you r really have a difficult time getting anywhere else. We have Edith Wharton's Ethan Frome, and I really loved the landscape um, art on this. It is mostly just snow, and then you get to this beautiful, um, what looks like a sunset. And it's one of those sunsets that has all of those gorgeous colors that make you ooh and ah and thank, uh, thank everybody in the world that you are alive to see a sunrise or a sunset that beautiful. So I like this cover. Ooh, the next one, I do like things that are painted. So this is, um, this is no exception. And that is the month, um, a month in the country by JL Carr. Um, look how gorgeous. I mean, look how gorgeous this color, these colors are. And again, I really like the, the painted quality of, um, the background. I just, I don't know, y'all, I just like it. Oh, and the final one, I actually have two copies of this book and I really didn't, I've owned this book for a very long time and originally I didn't like the cover of it. And then I started reading it a few days ago and I have come to appreciate the cover quite a bit because clearly the artist read the book before they did the piece and I really like that. You can just tell that the artist was inspired by the words that the writer had had crafted. And so that is The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I didn't think much about this cover for such a long time. And then I realized that um, the opening scene, this is um, Hester standing in the opening scene um, and probably throughout the novel, but that's where I got to. And she has this stitched, hand stitched A and even the way that her face is described and the way that she's holding herself and the way that she's holding her child, it gives you this image. <laughs> they feed into one another and it made me really appreciate this cover. All right, two categories to go, one of which is Lifeguard Shorts, a beach read, um, and I have four books for that, depending on my mood. So who knows, maybe I'll wanna read A Middle Grey Fantasy, which is by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is The Wizard of Earth Sea, and did I show, I don't know, I don't think I showed you this because I feel like I just discovered it. Um, but I found out that I own a signed copy of this book. Not on purpose. This was not on purpose. I own a signed copy of this book and I just, I just found the signature from Ursula K. Le Guin herself. So anyways, The, the Wizard of Earthsea. <laughs> Um, if I'm feeling like I want to dive into an author that I feel like I'll really enjoy, that I feel like I'll really love, but I want a short work of hers, and I want to also think about art and the way that relationships work, then I would pick up Meg Wolitzer's The Wife, <laughs> which I've heard really good things about from a lot of people here on Booktube. Now, if instead I'm feeling 
historical fiction, then I, of course, will go to my favorite historical fiction writer, and that is Hilary Mantel. <laughs> she, uh, and I have her book, The Giant O'Brien, which is, again, quite short. Or if I'm feeling like my soul is heavy and my heart is heavy laden, then, of course, I'll want to read James Hogg's The Private Memoirs and Confessions of a Justified Sinner. Now, the last category is play suit shorts, a book you'll regret. Now, I had a really hard time defining how I would regret reading something if I owned it. I don't know. So I was like, this is how I will regret it. I will regret starting in the wrong spot with an author and getting on the wrong foot, <laughs> getting off on the wrong foot with an author. And so will I regret these? I don't know. Is this the best place to start? Who knows? So we have George Elliott's, George Elliott's Silas Marner and Carson McCullers, The Ballad of the Sad Cafe and other stories. So I have other books, longer, longer books by both of these authors. <laughs> and um, I just, you know, I just don't know. Is this the best place to start? Um, you know, for Shorty September, maybe it will be. Who knows? So that is how I'm interpreting the regret uh, category. And that is it. These are most, if not all, this is, this is my short books. These are my short books that I'm thinking about that I want to read. This is my short book collection. <laughs> Tell me about your favorite short books. Are there books in this collection that you would highly recommend? Um, ones that you think I should start with? I would love to hear that. Basically, I just want to hear from y'all in, you know, <laughs> whatever way you want to interact kind of deal. But uh, yeah, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here and spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye guys.